My friends, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain a little. Number one, it's free. Two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you've ever been looking for to make a podcast in one place. Go ahead and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Knowledge is power. If you don't have any place to go, you won't go any place. Don't sell life insurance. Sell what life insurance can do. See the people. Selling is a combination of logic and motivation. If you live, it is money saved. Only if you die is it life insurance. The worst salesperson on earth sells as well as the unknown person. You don't want to be another unknown agent. Trade it in for any pay life. Stop when you wish and then own what you have paid for. The insurance that you own may well mean the ultimate success of your financial plan. Grab attention with the client-specific solutions. The insurance you do not own will never assure your success. You haven't done anything wrong. You haven't done anything. And that's what's wrong. Life insurance is really nothing but money. You don't need more life insurance, but you do need more money. Always be advancing to the next step to your sale. Goals aren't enough. You need goals plus deadlines. Your goals should be big enough to get you excited. Your deadlines should be should make you move faster. Your goals are not much good without deadlines for each. Together they can make you tremendous. You need the intestinal fortitude to cold call. Perceptions change over time. Intestinal fortitude works, so prospect. You miss every sale that you do not try for. The further you go, the faster you'll go because you will be thinking bigger. Your most important sale is when you sell yourself. If you've got a problem, make it a procedure and it won't be a problem anymore. It takes a smart person to make money, but it takes a genius to keep it. Uncle Sam has a first mortgage on everything you earn and own. People spend lifetimes locking away money, and at their death, someone has to step in and unlock it, oftentimes for only pennies on the dollar. Get constant favorable attention where you sell. Look for an approach that will harness the buyer's best interest. Most people buy not because they believe, but because the agent believes you. You need a passion to excel. Perfection comes from practice. Be goal focused. Never give up on anyone. Everyone deserves your help. No one ever died with too much money. Don't be afraid to show your compassion. Do you know anyone who has a lease on life? It isn't a question of if, it is a question of when. Go ahead and put me on your payroll. The day you walk out, I will walk in and pay your bills. The key to your sale is your interview. Get well known in your market area as the person who helps others to help themselves. The key to an interview is a disturbing or enlightening question. 
your prospect doesn't get excited first, you must get excited first. Show that you love your product, clients, company, and your work, and your sales will be consistent. Blend your work and your passion. Make sure the policy or portfolio policies accomplish what is wanted by and for the beneficiaries. The basic purpose of life insurance is to create cash. Nothing more and nothing less. Everything else confuses and complicates. It costs something to do something. And it costs something to do nothing. But doing nothing cost much more. I have money for sale at a discount. You'll need this someday to pay your taxes. May I present an idea that has been very valuable to a lot of people. If you can't put away 3% now, how are you doing? How are you going to find 100% later? Creditors will come knocking for estate taxes. If you make money, the politicians will always be eager and ready to take it, so try to protect yourself from them. In this country, the federal mortgage, the federal government has a mortgage on everything you own and they can take anything from you whenever they decide to target you. You must try to protect yourself. Sell during hard times and you can sell during any times. You must have a plan, Ben Councils. And the plan begins when you set your goals, production goals, earning goals, satisfaction goals. These are what make you run. These are the prizes at the end of the race. This is what you'll get out of life. Goals to me are everything. He recalls his first major goal. It was $35 a week. And to me, notes Ben, that was fabulous. The year was 1938. The place was Ohio and he was earning $10 a week selling butter and eggs for his father. Ben was 26 years old. He had met the loveliest girl in the world, a school teacher. And one day I proposed marriage. I'll never forget what she said. Do you intend to support me on $10 a week? Then I knew I had to do something. But where do you look for a job in a little town like this? It just so happened that a friend of mine was with a small industrial life insurance company on what was called a debit, and he was earning $35 a week, but to me that was fabulous. He indicated there might be an opening and so I went down and I applied for the job. When Feldman tells his story, he often shows a picture of himself as he looked at 26. The picture will tell you, he says laughingly, why I didn't get the job. A hayseed, a hick from the stick. How could I sell life insurance? They told me I didn't look the part. I didn't measure up. Everything was wrong. A husky farmy kid that went down the street dressed in overalls? You don't look like anybody who should go pounding on a door talking about life insurance. And maybe they were right. But you know, when you tell me I can't do something, you may be right. But I don't believe it. Nothing builds a fire under me more than if I'm told I can't do something. Maybe I can't, but I'm sure going to try. Ben always had extraordinarily self-assured. While I didn't know anything about life insurance, I knew this. If you can do it, I can do it. If you can make $35 a week, I can make $35 a week. I always felt I could do anything the next man could. His refusal to take no for an answer, well, you know, I don't hear a man when he says no. Finally impressed that small company manager, he decided to let Feldman try. I got the job. 
They gave me a debit and a collection book, and they told me to go to work. We didn't know if he was going to earn anything. His wife, everyone called Fritzi, recalled. From butter and eggs to 25 cents a week industrial policies was an enormous leap. Everyone was worried when Ben started to sell life insurance. But Ben said to me, if I decide to dig ditches, I'll dig the best ditches. And if I'm going to sell life insurance, I'll be the less, the best life insurance salesman there is. That $35 a week goal wasn't easy to achieve, but Ben did it. Then he moved his sights up a bit, $45 a week, $60 a week. Despite the fact that they broke up his debit and shared it with other agents, his earnings still increased. He set his goals higher. In less than three years, he was a top agent in the company, averaging almost $105 a week. It was late in 1941, and most salespeople his age would have been wholly content, but not Ben. Any man who is perfectly satisfied with the way he is living or the way he is doing his job is in a rut. If he has no driving urge to be a better person or do a better job, then he is standing still. And so any business person will tell you standing still is the same as going backwards. One of the greatest virtues a person can have is a total inability to be completely satisfied with his own work. Ben was resistive. He knew of other life insurance salespeople, ordinary agents who were getting out and making more money, making progress, but he was standing still. He didn't have much time to sell, really sell. Sure, he was making two or three little sales a day, but collections kept biting more deeply into his limited selling time. On a debit, primarily, you're a collector. First you collect, then if you have any time left, you sell. And I didn't like to collect. I just didn't. I compared my income with what full-time salespeople were making and the contrast was incredible. And I felt, my friend, if you can do it, I can do it. So he set a new kind of goal for himself, full-time selling. But it was a goal he knew he could never reach in his debit company. He'd have to find another life insurance company. That company was to be New York Life. So I went to see them and they weren't sure I'd fit into their operations at all. But Ben had set himself a goal and he was determined to reach it. He was deaf to their reservations and kept coming back with reasons why he would make a good fit. At one juncture he said, you toss me out of this door and I'll come back in that one. He was selling himself and finally they bought him. They weren't really sure I could make it and I knew it was going to be tough. Nowadays, the agent has a built-in cushion. He's entitled to a guarantee to some money regularly. He's entitled to a guarantee to some money regularly, come what may. But in 1942, no sales, no money. Either you sold or you didn't eat. The debit company was sure it wouldn't eat. You can come back to us at the end of the 90 days, they said. Their vice president told me. This ordinary business isn't for you. You'll fall flat on your face. Well, maybe I would fall on my face, but you know, I had to find out for myself. I had to make the change. A man has to let go of lower things and reach for the higher. In his first year with New York Life, he joined the company February 15, 1942. He was 29 years old, and his first son, Richard, had just been born. He was still thinking debit-sized policies, thinking small. If you think small, your cases will be small. I was writing a lot of small cases, a lot of $500 policies, not very much volume. By the end of the year, he had delivered 168 policies. His lifetime average is 172, but his volume was only $252,000. By mid-1944, Feldman's new goals had been met. He'd paid for more than $500,000 in the past 12 months, but he was still dissatisfied. Sure, his volume was up, and his average policy had grown to nearly $2,000 from his rookie year's $1,300. But it wasn't enough to make matters worse. The key to Ben's escalating goals was to better prospects, and he believed he was running out of prospects. 
he needed help. But even more important, he was in trouble and he'd listen. But let Ben tell it the way he told the editor of the New York Life's Field Magazine a year later. After carefully listening to all my troubles, Andy Thompson, my manager, said, Ben, how would you like to do something no one from our company has done in Ohio in so many years? What? I answered a bit curiously, and I might add cautiously, make the million dollar round table in the next 12 months. If I hadn't been sitting at the time, I would have fallen down, I thought to myself. Andy's gone crazy. Here I've driven 40 miles to tell him I've written myself out of prospects and I don't know where my next application is coming from and he asked me if I'd like to make the million dollar round table. What could I lose? So I said sure, but how? And Andy told me how I could do it. Become an expert in program selling. Get into the small business insurance field. There's a tremendous potential in small businesses cases. But you'll have to do some studying. You are going to have to go after the better and the bigger cases. Remember, you can't kill an elephant with a pop gun. When he told me this, Feldman admits, I knew what he what I had been doing wrong. I hadn't been thinking big enough. I just didn't have a big enough goal. Now he had the goal. And he went after it relentlessly with a tremendous supply of sheer physical energy that still never lets his mind make appointments his body can't keep. His volume trembled, and by June 1945, he had earned his first membership in the, in the Million Dollar Roundtable with 224 sales for just over $1.1 million. And he had been in ordinary sales only a little over three years. He had learned how to think big. The size of your cases will be governed by your thinking. Think big and your cases will be big. Most men exchange their lifetimes for much too little. Don't be afraid to think big. Raise your own sights. Then you can raise your prospect sights. Think big and you'll be big. Think big and then think bigger. Your goals have to be big enough to get you excited. That makes you run. But once you reach them, Ben explains, they don't excite you any longer. Whatever I did yesterday, today no longer looks big. It looks small. I can't get excited about anything that looks small. Only something big. Old goals don't excite. You have to set a goal and regardless of what it is, once it's attained, replace it with a new goal, a bigger goal. Don't be afraid if it gets bigger and bigger. You know the difference between $100,000 and $1 million? Only one zero. You're not afraid to think big. It's amazing how much bigger you can become. Dream. Don't be afraid to dream. 300,000 looked big 35 years ago. Now 70 million wouldn't frighten me. Set a big goal. Nothing builds a bigger fire under me than a bigger goal, than a bigger goal, and then a bigger goal. It's Ben's unremitting drive toward these new goals that has set broken sales record after sales record and will break new sales records tomorrow. There's always some new goal way up ahead. There's always something I can look up to. There's always something bigger. Hey, congratulations on giving your family this valuable gift. You have made a smart and valuable decision by purchasing a life insurance policy. Every day, families are faced with the difficult task of saying goodbye to loved ones. As hard as it is to deal with a loss, the costs that are left for the family to pay can create a financial burden on family members, making this time even harder. Because you purchased this life insurance policy, you can rest easy knowing that your family will have the extra support of a death benefit to help cover any expected or unexpected costs. Referrals are the sincerest form of appreciation. 
My business is built on trust, confidence, and satisfaction in the products and services that I provide. When you, a client, take the time to refer a friend to me, a neighbor, or an acquaintance, I know I've done my job to the best of my ability. Thank you so much. Have a good day.